Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm David Goodwill. Over there is John Lewandowski. How you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Uh, been a busy week for us. Yeah, it has. <laughs> um, podcast and personal. Right. <laughs> so, uh, lots of conversations between the two of us on how we were going to do this uh, over and under. It ended up being Zoom. Um, for the explanation of that, um, we were going to do it. Uh, it, uh, live, thank God we didn't decide to do that with either a blackout or I don't know what the issue was, but the game was supposed to be on NHL Network and I was unable to watch it on NHL Network. But apparently if you have NHL Center Ice or Sportsnet, you can watch it. So, I don't know. That's tough. Um... Since I have ESPN Plus, no luxury there. Um, this is only the third time the Preds are playing overseas. In 2001, they played against the Pittsburgh Penguins in Japan. Ah, to go with it, the more you know. Uh -huh. Um, the Sharks are kind of trying to find out whether or not they're going to be, you know, buyers or sellers, but they're. Goaltending don't look that good. Uh, defense, they're okay statistically. Uh, their offense is lackluster. All right, so John, go ahead. You can uh, read off the stat line for me. All right, so the Predators outshot the Sharks 32 to 31. In the faceoff, the Sharks had the Predators 55% to 46%. On the power play, both teams went 0 for 4. Um, each team had 13 penalty minutes. Uh, the Predators out hit the Sharks 23 22. Uh, the Sharks out blocked the Predators 23 to 11. And giveaways, Sharks with 8, Predators with 3. Statistically, in that lineup, what I like seeing is the, the shots on goal is, a, is, is 30 plus, uh, giveaways under five. Right. Uh, as many blocks as the shark, Sharks had to take, that had to do a toll on their body doing a back to back. Right. So now we're going to see how teams adjust their lineups tomorrow after seeing what they saw today, because both of these teams had a shortened camp. And the Nashville Predators are poised to go 82. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. I joke, I joke, I joke. Uh, scoring in the first is uh, the uh, confused Preds internet fans of uh, Kiefer Sherwood being on that second line. It definitely showed why uh, scoring off his first goal without any of the guys assisting to him from his line. It was... Uh, on the assist was an Ekholm and uh, McDonough. Uh, yep, McDonough. I am currently uh, trying to deal with a little side note here. Uh, then Tomas Hurdle scores uh, with an assist from Timo Meyer and Luke Coonan, former Fred, traded him for uh, John Lennard, who's in Milwaukee at the current moment. He's playing top line minutes for them. Uh, um. Shots in the first period were uh, 13 to 11 San Jose. Uh, second period shots were 15 to 9 Nashville. Scoring in that period was um, Ellie Tolvanen uh, with assists from Smith and Glass, and then Nino Niederreier with assists from Fabro and Shearwood. So Sherwood so far with a two point night, uh, definitely showing why he deserves to be out there with them. Uh, they right. obviously feel comfortable. There's a connection there somewhere. I don't know what it is or where it is or how they did it, but I mean, Fabro looked good. Was, oh, good for Glass to be getting a point right off the jump, get a hot start. Um, anybody who's been watching behind the glass, like me and John have, um. It, it's so important to to get off to that, you know, get the monkey off your back right away. And for Glass to get an assist and Illy Tolvanen to get a goal, you know, Tolvanen's kind of sitting on that fringe bust area. All right. 
And so Tolvin has got to prove that he deserves to be in that top six or even in the top nine. So it, it was nice. Um, also, to to the better part of this, uh, the herd line was kind of quiet. Yeah. Um, Boro did get into a fight. I did not see him after that in the game. I did not hear his name. Um, in the third, at all. Uh, scoring in the third is Matt Dushin with an assist from Mikel Granlund and P uh, Peter Philip Forsberg. Um. Uh. That was an empty net goal. Uh, that put the Preds up four to one. So Nashville, it's frosty time. Um, in net for the uh, Sharks was James Reimer. Reimer stopped twenty eight to thirty one. Um, all goals scored on him were on even strength, obviously. Uh, with a point nine zero three save percentage. Uh, in that. Oh, I'm so sorry. And that for the Preds was start uh Saros with 30 saves out of 31 shots with a 0.968 save percentage. Uh Saros got a lot of work early and often. Uh they looked better in the second, and in the third, they just clamped down to hold their three to, to one lead. Um So, so there's that as well. Um, the Preds are back at it again tomorrow. Same time, same place. Uh, just different jerseys. In a mm -hmm. sense, because they're going to be the road team. Right. Um, I had a feeling Duchesne would be doing something, hence why I'm wearing my Matt Duchesne hoodie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. So much luck there for them. Uh, we're wishing the Preds the best this season. Uh. Um, we haven't made many statements, but our thoughts are with the hockey fans down in Florida as they don't know when, uh, the at least for what I know from what I heard from some of our fans on the side of the Everblades, they don't know when they're going to play. Um, I guess the damage was a lot towards that area, and uh, as many of our, our fans of our podcast during the last couple of years, and we've got to know a few people, um, I really hope that they're all okay. I thank you all for watching. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by Hockey Locker. They're the, uh, one of the few spots left that do hand, hand skate sharpening, and I don't mean sitting there with a sharpening rock going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he, you know, Mighty Duck Hongs, it's your old school, local mom and pop hockey shop, uh, right over there on, uh, I believe that to be 20th and Howard, um, or right across the street from Wilson Park. So if you get your skate sharpened and you go over to Wilson Park and skate, you can, you know, me and John just joked about it a couple times. I don't know how good it is. Hmm. <laughs> Because their wives are constantly saying they want to put us in a bubble. <laughs> mm, right. So uh, we thank you guys for watching. Um, We will be back tomorrow evening, not right after the Preds game, because right after the Preds game, um, I have to prep for the Milwaukee Admirals preseason game number two. Game number one is tonight down in – I believe it is in Rosemont. I wouldn't be surprised if it, if if it's elsewhere. I'm I, I don't know, but um, I would believe it to be Rosemont. Um, it's good good to have hockey back. Good to yeah. Um, commentary was really good for the Preds, even though I listened to the radio and pretty much just laid here in the chair like this the whole time. Mm -hmm. The so, uh, thanks, everybody. Um, uh, the Preds will be cutting their roster probably Saturday or Sunday. Uh, the Preds are spending the night in Prague on uh, Saturday and coming back on Sunday. Um, the uh, Preds then play again on uh, 
uh, try to not butcher this. Ah, yes, they play Thursday against the Stars at your standard 7 o'clock time. So we will be back to our normal broadcasting services. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust me, me and John are exhausted. We've been trying to prep all week for this, this and it, it did not work. Yeah. Our prep did not work. Me and him are both tired. We're going to be tired tomorrow. We have to do one. Then we'll get lucky to get an hour nap before the next you know, before the Admirals game. So for us, uh, we're going to sleep in and uh, we will chat with y'all later. Thank you guys for watching.